Coming up on this Thursday evening, one of the oldest buildings in Las Vegas is on fire. Again, the old ice house is burning. PEPCON executives say they're not to blame for the Henderson explosions. They're pointing the finger of blame at a leaking gas line. And the health department is looking into another potential problem at Pacific Engineering. The 5 o'clock news is next. You've been thinking about cosmetic surgery, doctor's credentials, and cost. Dr. Charles Vinnick, one of the most experienced, respected, and skilled cosmetic surgeons, board certified with memberships in 10 prestigious medical organizations, and has the only state license and nationally accredited plastic surgery day surgery center in Las Vegas. Discover the significant savings, safety, and comfort this means to you. Dr. Charles Vinnick, 735-6755. Call now. You're watching the news channel for Southern Nevada, KLAS-TV, Channel 8, Las Vegas. Now, live, Brian Gresh, Tommy Joe Taylor, the 5 o'clock news. Hello, everybody. I'm Brian Gresh. And I'm Tommy Joe Taylor. Thanks for joining us this evening. Sadly, it's a familiar scene to Las Vegans. The old ice house is burning. One of the city's oldest buildings and historical landmark is on fire once again. George Knapp is on the scene to give us the latest details now. George? This could be the end of the line for the old ice house, which, as you probably know, is the second oldest structure in southern Nevada. It's been burning like this as it is now behind me since about 3.20 this afternoon, sending huge plumes of thick black smoke hundreds of feet into the air. Eight fire units and 30 men are here trying to battle this place, but they're no longer inside. They were inside for about 17 minutes fighting it on the inside, but were pulled out. And now, as you can see, they're just dumping water on it from the outside, trying to contain it, hopefully trying to to save the structure itself. We don't know at this point what started the fire. I think it's safe to assume that this time around, it wasn't uh, vagrants trying to keep warm as it has been in the past. There have been several fires here over the years since it, it was abandoned in 1983. Um, this, however, could be the one that's going to uh, take, take the ice house down. With me right now is Chief Clell West of the Las Vegas Fire Department. Chief, uh, does it look like there's gonna be anything left of this building? Uh, I can't tell right now, George, but it, it appears right now that it, there's going to be extensive damage. Would you explain the strategy of pulling the men out from the inside? Uh, yes, we uh, originally, when we first got here, it was very heavily involved. We went through the normal strategy of interior attack. Uh, we made a penetration in and was fighting the fire from the interior. Uh, conditions got such that uh, we felt that the firefighters were endangered uh, due to the uh, previous fire that we had here. The structure was uh, not stable, and uh, so we pulled them out. And you've blocked off the streets down here, is that correct? Yes, we have. Okay. Thank you, Chief. It's just a cry and shame what's happened into this building. There's one developer here in town. It's actually several people who've been interested in turning the old ice house into a kind of a combination office complex or a shopping mall. Those plans don't look very good right now. Reporting live for Eyewitness News 8 from what remains of the old ice plant, this is George Knapp. Looks grim. Thank you for the report, George. It wasn't PEPCON's fault. That's the word from Pacific Engineering executives who claim they are not responsible for the explosions that rocked Henderson last week. PEPCON is pointing the finger of blame at a leaking gas line. A news release issued this afternoon says a high-pressure line passing through the plant suffered a catastrophic leak, causing the blast and the fire that followed. PEPCON executives admit they don't know what would have caused the gas leak, but promise they will pursue their investigation. Brian? Tommy Joe, PEPCON's allegations against Southwest Gas were released to us late this afternoon. Now, since then, Southwest Gas has refused to comment. In recent days, there had been speculation natural gas might have been at the heart of the problem at PEPCON. Earlier today, the Southwest Gas spokesman talked with us about those rumors. It's, it's safe to assume that our line did rupture. We know that, and we could see from your own video that uh, it was on fire, and when we shut the gas off, that fire, that particular fire went out. We feel, however, that the rupture in our line was the result of the explosion at PEPCON and not the cause. Hetherington says the 16-inch Southwest gas pipeline was installed more than 30 years ago. He says PEPCON built its plant several years later within yards of the existing pipeline. The health department is investigating another potential problem at Pacific Engineering this evening. It involves what EPA officials say is the unauthorized dumping of lead into the desert. 
health officials say while testing for lead in the soil following last week's explosion they found toxic levels of lead on the property they found it one inch below the surface indicating it was there before the explosions health official mike naylor doesn't know how the lead got there but he says pacific engineering did use lead in its process they should have reported they should have had another way to dispose of that they should have had a proper disposal of that waste and they, they didn't and it should have been coordinated and sanctioned through the state Naylor has turned the case over to the state EPA for further investigation. Meanwhile, the vice president of Pacific Engineering, Keith Rooker, says he can't comment on the lead findings until he has a chance to investigate. But he did say to us, quote, we are not doing anything inappropriate under any regulation, end quote. Kerr McGee caved into the pressure today and announced it has once again ceased production of ammonium perchlorate, the same chemical that was made by Pepcon. At a news conference this morning, Governor Richard Bryan told reporters he had discussed citizen concerns with executives at the plant. Henderson area residents were outraged when the company started making the chemical again earlier this week. But now, Kerr McGee says it will halt operations until an inspection shows the plant is safe. We had a meeting with representatives from Kerr McGee, the first that I had had yesterday afternoon. At the time, I had requested that they reconsider their decision explaining the nature of the public concern, uh, and they indicated that they would do so and that they would uh, get back in touch with me today. They have done so. Just uh, a little over an hour ago, I received a call from them, and uh, they have agreed to temporarily suspend the operations there at the Kermagee plant in Henderson. The safety inspection could begin as early as next Monday, but it may not be enough for Henderson. The Henderson City Council will hold an emergency session in about 30 minutes. City leaders say they are not satisfied with the agreement worked out by the governor and Kerr McGee. Well, Richard Urey will be attending that meeting at City Hall. He is standing by now with a live report for us. Richard, what can you tell us? Well, Brian, as you might well understand, uh, just eight days after the big blast, the uh, Tenderson people are not willing to trust anybody at this point when it comes to their personal safety and the safety of their homes and families. Gary Bloomquist is city manager for Henderson. He has heard that the Kermagee plant has once again ceased its ammonium perchlorate operation. The governor says that's a deal that has been worked out. It was shut down again this afternoon. Yet there's an emergency city council meeting here this evening at City Hall to discuss Kermagee's policies over there. Where are you going from here? What more can be done? I'm not completely sure. In the first place, we're very pleased. I've talked to all the council members about the closure, and we're pleased it's closed. Discussion was went back and forth about do we still hold this meeting this evening it was determined that the meeting definitely should be held we weren't at the announcement at 11:30 this morning we don't know exactly what happened governor's office will be represented here this evening and will explain to the council exactly what announcement was made and what protections are here for the people within the city.